My name is Martin Webster, and this is a testimony from my book, Soldier of Consequence, which I wrote in 2006. I touched my cross, which I'd been taken on many tours and was given to me by my gran. I made a quick sign of the cross and asked all of us to have the Lord's protection so that everyone could come home alive. Although we'd been up for action from the start, we were all at the beginning really starting to get tired and scared. The sky was pitch black, but to the east I could see some dark blue emerging. The conditions were poor and we needed some daylight on our side so that the Iraqis would have less cover and make it easier for us to see them. The strip of light on the horizon was a real sign of hope and that we could see this ship through to the end. Please don't let any of us die now. Please let us all go home. Please, please, please. This is what I was thinking. I kept repeating it in my head like a mantra, praying to God that nothing bad would happen. I think it was at this point that I had a moment of clarity. Everything in life happens for a reason, no matter how vile or amazing. You only have one life and you better make the best of it. We are all here to be tested and to learn. You fucking biff, stay awake, said Head, jolting me out of my prayer as he emerged from his hiding place. Now that the gunfire had stopped, he was out to check that his blokes weren't falling asleep. They were petrified of him because he was a real bully and a coward. I turned to one of my friends. Well, Brownie, me old mucker, we're nearly at breakfast time. There was a terrific boom in the distance and the sun was rising. And it was at this glorious morning, suddenly the pungent smell of stale urine, dead bodies, suddenly brought me back down to earth. As I glanced nervously over the wall and saw my mates holding their noses at such a stench of congealed blood. And they were struggling to pick up the dead Iraqis piled in the courtyard of the palace. I could hear the sound of gunfire in the distance, but knew it was too far away to put my life in direct threat. The Iraqis had lost a lot of blokes and the previous night they had a dozen more casualties. So what did my moment of clarity mean? What did I learn? War it provides us with an adrenaline rush as a powerful drug. After it, you're physically and mentally drained. Then it all sinks in. You have time for reflection and introspection. Was I scared? What will I be in the future? Will I be the same again? The only thing that I was sure of is that it wasn't fun. Yet laughter was an integral part of our survival. Had we not been able to keep our spirits up with the humour, we may not have found the strength to keep going. It was odd, because very little of what I experienced out there would fit most people's idea of what is funny. It was like you're young at school or at a funeral, and you have the fit of giggles, knowing that you're not allowed to laugh, but somehow you laugh even more. Fear, crying, deep belly laughs are similar physical states. They all relate to extreme rushes of emotion. To show them in public is very powerful and infectious. War is one of the most biggest emotional roller coasters that you will ever experience. In this situation, we had to draw sides, the good guys and the bad guys. It's just nothing personal. That's just the way it is to survive. We weren't journalists and we certainly weren't politicians. We were soldiers being paid to wreak havoc and fuck people up with dangerous weapons. If you're going to join the army in this century, then expect to be called upon to kill and maim people. Every bit of training we did geared us towards making us killers. If you join for any other reason, then you are simply in the wrong job. War is madness. To survive madness, you must become madness and you must fight like a bastard. The rest is basically up to luck and fate, but your soul will never be the same again once you cross that line. The soldier takes the life, but the human being has to live with the consequences.